Brittany and Sebastian here. So I just wanted to apologize because in the video that you are seeing, I do talk of like, it was supposed to go out yesterday, which would have been Christmas Eve, but I couldn't get it up yesterday. So it's going up today. So Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope that you guys had an amazing Christmas and I know it's a little bit different this year and a little more difficult but I hope you still had an amazing one and I'm sorry that I didn't get the video up yesterday but two videos will be going up tomorrow as well as they are Christmas themed but why not right so I love you guys and enjoy hey guys so definitely a little bit different of a scene i'm actually sitting in a parking lot right now because i am working so um for those of you i don't think i've ever said what i do for work right now but i am a ship shopper so essentially I'm kind of like a personal shopper or I pick up like people's groceries or things like that. And it works really well with Sebastian and just like a way to make extra money and stuff. But I definitely wanted to make sure that I was getting these videos to you because you know, Christmas is tomorrow, which is crazy because it definitely doesn't feel like Christmas. So anyways, I hope that you guys are very excited for Christmas. I know I'm still excited for Christmas, to, like despite any of the circumstances. We're going to be doing like Zoom calls with family and stuff, and like video chatting, which I guess is Zoom. <laughs> but today, which I'm sure you guys can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be talking about Ryla and the Icelandic trolls. So the Icelander trolls are not like the jolly, bearded, happy Santa type being that we know, but instead they are 13 filthy trolls who uh, in entire purpose is to just create chaos in people's lives. And they are led by their mother, Gryla. So throughout most of the year, they are said to live and hide in their mountain fortress that is located in the Myvatn area of North Iceland. And their fortress is called Demurgberg, Demurgir, I, I have no idea how to pronounce it. So from December 12th through the 24th, that these trolls come down one by one from their mountain and just create havoc in people's lives. Each one has different antics and they range from being grotesque to absolutely horrifying. And over the years, depictions of them have changed. So they went from like these not the nicest looking, not, you know, nice to encounter trolls to like mini Santas. Now they tend to wear that traditional red and white suit and they have fluffy beards and wide smiles and they're actually rather nice to encounter. Instead of pulling pranks, they will actually leave presents in the shoe that children will place on their windowsills. And instead of Gryla coming and, you know, taking and devouring naughty children, it's they leave rotten potatoes in the shoes for the naughty children. So it's definitely changed a lot. However, Gryla has not changed as much. Throughout the year, it's said that she collects whispers about children around the island who are misbehaving. And when winter sets in, she goes out to gather them. And her appetite is literally insatiable. So she can't, she always wants more, I guess. Like she's never satisfied. She collects them up in a sack. She then cooks them in a pot and turns them into a giant stew that will last her until next winter, which I don't know why everything just reminds me of Hansel and Gretel. Like anytime that is like a witch type thing that is, you know, going after children and wants to make them into 
this food. It literally just reminds me of Hansel and Guile every single time. Now, Gryla shares her mountain cave with this enormous black cat called the Christmas cat or the Yule cat, which we will get into the cat in a different video. So definitely make sure that you are staying tuned and looking out for that video, which will be posted very, very shortly. So definitely pay attention for that one. Gryla lives with her latest husband. So she's had several different husbands. She uh, gets bored with them and basically offs them. And she hasn't been bored with this one yet, but his name is Paddy, which he is another troll. And he is rather docile and kind of does whatever Gryla says. It kind of goes along with Gryla and doesn't really argue with her or anything, which is maybe is why she hasn't gotten bored with him because he doesn't like counter her. Now, the winters in Iceland are extremely brutal and it's not uncommon for disobedient children who wander off into the cold at night to go missing, which is absolutely awful. And the story of Gryla was actually outlawed, which is crazy. I mean, it is a very, very dark story. So, I can see why it would become outlawed, but yeah, it was outlawed. And that is probably a big reason why the Icelandic trolls change in appearance. But there are statues of her that can be found all throughout Iceland. Now, today, when the season arrives, the 13 Yule Lads will come down from the mountain one by one to attend celebrations and play with children. Now, before industrialization happened, even adults very much believed in trolls. So they were very careful when it came to the Yule Lads and Gryla because they very much believed in them. Each Yule Lad was different. However, they all shared some very similar characteristics such as being enormous filthy unintelligent creatures who were very humanoid but also very like bestial in like equal measure and they could only come out at night because if they came out during the day and the sun hit them they would turn to stone so now we're actually going to talk about each yule lad and sebastian's actually sitting in the back seat that's why you saw like you can see his hand um so the first one is sex shot sex star <laughs> i'm going to butcher all of these names i will put them up on the screen so you guys can see how they're spelled but he is also known as the sheep coat clad and he comes down the 12th through the 26th of december now he is the very first yule lad to leave the mountain and he will harass the sheep of any household that he comes across. Now, Icelanders would normally keep their sheep underground during the winter months. So when they would hear their sheep being tormented and like bleeding and stuff, they would know that he had gotten to them. Now, his stiff legs impaired him from moving very well at all. The best thing to actually do, which is kind of awful, is to just kind of let him, you know, finish harassing the sheep and then you knew he was going to move on soon. But it's sad that you like you just sat there while he harassed the sheep. So the second one is Gilgagor. And he is also known as Gully Gawk. And he is the second Yule Lad to come down from the mountain. He would wait until people fell asleep. And then he would break into the cow shed and steal all of their milk. Only wealthier folks actually owned cows. However, most people, like the more poorer people, lived on the farmsteads of the wealthy. So everybody was affected by this one. The next one is Stouffer which is also known as Stubby. And he is the third troll to come down from the mountain. He would steal any of the household pans for the crusts that remained on them. Now, pots and pans were incredibly valuable in Iceland. They, the country didn't have its own mining industry, so it had to be imported. And for, you know, families that didn't have as much, these were the, you know, the only valuable items that they actually owned. So it was a big deal if these got stolen. 
And Surfer's name actually came from the fact that he was much shorter than his brothers. Now the fourth one to come down from the mountain was Thor Thorver Skier. <laughs> um, he is also called Spoon Licker. And he would break into the house and lick spoons, hoping to get even a morsel of food. Now his behavior was due to him having a very unique deformity. He was incredibly thin due to malnutrition, which was very unusual because trolls were known to be very muscular and overweight. So the fact that he was so thin was not very common. The fifth one to come down was Potscaville. Now, he was also called Pot Scraper. He would break into homes looking for pots of sauce, chunks of roast beef, saucepans of seasonal vegetables, and well, basically anything that he could find to eat. Now, foodstuffs were meant to be preserved to last the family throughout the harsh winter. So any type of waste was severely frowned upon, and if Pot Scraper, you know, got his hands on any of it, it definitely affected the family quite a bit. Now the next one is Askelakir. Now he is called Bowl Licker and he is the sixth Yule Lad to come down from the mountain. He would slurp the remains of whatever was left in bowl. Each night he would lie beneath a child's bed which is absolutely terrifying. Like I used to check under the bed. Occasionally I still check under the bed. So he would check under the bed waiting for the child to finish their nighttime soup or pudding and then he would snatch up the remains and eat the rest the next one is herdas turtle a skier and he is known as door slammer he would literally sneak into homes and just slam as many doors as he could to wake up the family which is a little bit like rude the next one is skier grimoire skier grimoire <laughs> He is Sky, Sky Gobbler, 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 oh my goodness. Um, and he is the eighth Yule Lad. So he would quite literally devour Sky, which was a Icelandic delicacy. And this is the only food that he liked to eat. So people definitely watched theirs when he was coming down from the mountain. The ninth Yule Lad to come down from the mountain is Björgenes Kier, Kier? He is called the Sausage Snatcher. So he had perfected his way of stealing Bjusgu, which was another Icelandic delicacy. And how he would do it, he would break into homes and hide in the rafters, waiting for dinner to be served before swooping in from above and literally snatching them. The 10th Yule Lad to come down from the mountain is Glugagir. And he is known as Window Peeper, which I hate windows so much. Like windows are so nice during the day and then the dark comes and you don't want anything to do with them anymore. At least I don't. So he would literally stare in people's windows. So definitely not something that you want to have happen. <laughs> the 11th you lad to come down from the mountain was named Gata Gata the Four. He <laughs> was known as Doorway Sniffer. He was known for his big nose and he has forever been seeking out his favorite meal, which is leaf bread. Now leaf bread is only made around Christmas time and that's it. It's very thin, round and fried and it's decorated in very intricate patterns using leaves, which I think is actually pretty awesome. The 12th Yule Lad to come down is Krekakor. So he is known as Meat Hook. He would lurk wherever he had access to a kitchen. And as soon as he could avoid being caught, he would take out his long hook and literally take the centerpiece of the meal. So like any meat, <laughs> like ham, whatever. Like the, the big, the, the big piece. The last Yule lead, Yule lead, the last Yule lad to come down from the mountain was named Curtis Clear. Curtis. Kurt Usknicker. He is also known as Candle Stealer. Now, in the past, candles were incredibly valuable in Iceland. They were the only means of lighting the house and reading, which was actually very common and very much enjoyed, especially around the holidays. The family would gather together 
each Christmas to read, which is, I, I mean, I think that's awesome. Now he sought to only eat the tallow from which the candles were made. And in order to get as much tallow as possible, he would steal from the easiest targets, which would be children. And sometimes he'd snatch them right out of their hands, which is awful. Now, those are all of the Yule Lads. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about Gryla. So Gryla was said to be this horrible sorceress. She was also a troll and she didn't start popping up until the 17th century. She is a cannibalistic troll, which if you guys haven't came to that conclusion yet, <laughs> she is. And she is often described as having horns, hoofs, and a large warty nose, along with 13 or 15 tails, depending on the story. Said that on each one of her tails, she carries a hundred sacks to stuff children in. She's also been known to have many heads, but more modern depictions of her only have her having one head. So according to the oldest poems, Gryla originally lived in a small cottage. She was a very persistent and troublesome beggar who would walk around asking parents to give her their disobedient children, which just, I would probably freak if someone's like, um, give me Sebastian. Like, no, who are you? So people would end, either end up giving her food or chasing her away. And one day she was actually forced to move out of the village, which makes complete sense because she's asking for people's children. And she moved out of the, the village with her family. And that is how Gryla came to be. So I already know what you guys think about Gryla and the Eulas. And if you guys had ever heard of them before, I hope that you guys are having an awesome Christmas Eve. And I hope that you guys have a Merry Christmas. I just, I think that this like, Gryla and the Eulas seem very disturbing. <laughs> That, is, that basically sums it up. But I hope that you guys have a Merry Christmas tomorrow and I will see you in my next video. I love you guys. Bye.